with our discussion of the uh, various important theorems concerning zeros of analytic functions. So uh, what I described it briefly at the end of the previous lecture was the so called open mapping theorem okay. So uh, let me uh, go ahead and try to give a proof of that uh, uh, and I must say that uh, uh, once you look at the, at the proof of that you will see that from that proof you can also get the proof of the uh, so called inverse function theorem okay. So, so we start like this uhhh you uh, so the so the theorem let me state the theorem uh, open mapping theorem so what does this say uh, let uh, f be an analytic function analytic or holomorphic function uh, defined uh, of course defined and analytic on a domain T in the complex plane uh, then uh, suppose f is non constant non constant in d on d okay then f is an open map that is uh, if u inside d is an open subset then f of u inside complex plane is also an open subset uh, also an open subset uh, so in particular uh, the image of f namely f of d is open in so this is the open mapping theorem it says that a non constant uh, analytic function non constant holomorphic function uh, carries open sets to open sets okay it is a very deep theorem and the proof of the theorem of course uses uh, the uh, uh, argument principle which is actually the uh, residue theorem applied to the logarithmic derivative of a suitable function okay. Uh, uh, so, uh, so you know uh, so let me so let me draw a diagram so let me tell you what the proof so let me go ahead with the proof so here is here is the complex plane this is the source complex plane uh, C this is the Z plane and here is uh, if you want my uh, domain D of course the way I have drawn it my domain D looks like a bounded domain mind you let me let me recall that a domain is an open connected subset okay it is a subset which is both open and which is connected of course the way I have drawn it it looks like a bounded domain bounded by this boundary curve I have just drawn it like that for simplicity but it need not look like this okay it need it need not be bounded at all okay and uh, then I have this mapping uh, w equal to fz uh, which takes any uh, if I start with the point z0 then it will take uh, it will map it to a complex value the values are taken in another copy of the complex plane which is called uh, 
the w plane or the omega plane and uh, well z0 uh, goes to some w0 okay and what we want to show is that the image of any open set is open okay uh, so what i'm going to do is uh, uh, so that as i told you the the point is uh, uh, so so let me write that down uh, let is uh, it not be a point of w uh, of d and uh, of w not be equal to f of z now so uh, so we are always going to see the whole point is we are going to think of uh, values of a function as uh, zeros of a suitable function okay so that is always the idea so values of so w not is a value of f of z okay that should be translated as zero uh, 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 w not is a value of f of z at z equal to z not that should be translated as z not is a zero of f of z minus w not that's how you should translate everything in terms of zeros okay and why do you translate everything in terms of zeros is because you can uh, then apply uh, the uh, the counting principle the argument principle which allows you to count the number of zeros you so that is the whole point okay so uh, that's so z0 is a zero of uh, f minus uh, f of z minus w0 right but notice that f of z is analytic uh, it's holomorphic and non constant okay uh, so f of z minus w0 is also uh, holomorphic it's also analytic it's also non constant so uh, since f is non constant analytic f z minus w0 is also non constant analytic analytic on d okay and this is the whole point you have a non constant analytic function and you have a zero of that you know then that the zeros of a non constant analytic function are isolated okay that is the point that is why uh, i made this observation to begin with that it is non constant analytic okay and that since zeros are isolated it means that uh, uh, there is a disk surrounding the zero z0 of this function uh, such that uh, in the disk inside the disk and on the boundary of the disk there are no other zeros of the function f minus w0 okay so uh, so there exists a rho positive such that such that uh, uh, f of z minus w0 has uh, uh, no zeros in zero strictly less than mod z minus z0 less than or equal to rho so the only zero is at z equal to z0 okay and there are, there are no zeros in this deleted closed neighbor closed disk right so if i draw it in the diagram here so you have uh, you have a disk d i mean you have this small disk centered at z0 radius rho okay and perhaps this diagram is too small okay. let me let me try to draw slightly bigger tri diagram so so here is z0 z0 and here is the disk centered at z0 radius rho and in this disk of course this disk uh, 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 zero the set of all uh, points in the disk uh, the set uh, the set of all z such that uh, mod z minus z not is less than or equal to rho is of course contained in d of course you are looking at a disk inside d okay uh, i mean what is the theorem on isolation isolation of zeros of an analytic function so it says you take an analytic function which is not constant in a on an open set a given a zero you can find a disk surrounding that zero where there are no other zeros and this disk is of course in that open set 
on, on which the fu identity function is defined therefore this disk is chosen inside D that you must remember. So this is because of uh, the fact that the zeros of an analytic function are isolated okay and which if you go back uh, and recall it is actually uh, another way of uh, uh, saying the so called identity theorem which says that you know uh, if, if you have non isolated 0 then the only possibility is that the function is throughout 0 identically equal to 0 which means it becomes constant and that but that is not true it is we have assumed it is to the function to be a non constant function okay. So also you know we have used this used this idea many times bef before if you take the function and restrict it to this boundary boundary circle okay if you in particular look at the modulus of the function of the boundary circle then that modulus will have a lower bound and an upper bound that is because mod mod of uh, f minus f of z minus w0 will be a continuous real valued function on this uh, boundary circle okay which is compact and a continuous real valued function which is compact uh, a, a, a continuous real valued function defined on a compact connected set the image will be a closed interval okay therefore it will have a minimum value it will have a maximum value so so uh, uh, since uh, uh, mod of f of z minus w0 is continuous on the compact connected connected set mod z minus z0 is equal to rho namely the boundary circle there exists a delta positive such that uh, mod of f of z minus w0 is greater than or equal to delta for all z with mod z minus z0 uh, is equal to rho okay this is just the fact that uh, f of z minus w0 is analytic so mod f is continuous okay f of z minus w0 is analytic function is an analytic function of z it is a holomorphic function of z so it is certainly continuous because uh, analytic functions are continuous and then modulus of a continuous function is again continuous because you are composing the function with the mod function and mod function is continuous it is a composition of two functions so it is continuous and this is a continuous real valued function in fact it has non-negative real values because it is a mod and uh, uh, if you restrict it to this compact connected set the image will be again a compact connected subset of the real line so that will be a closed interval on the real line it will be a finite closed interval on the real line and it is the and the minimum value of the interval is exactly what I am calling as lambda and mind you the la uh, uh, I am sorry as, as delta and this delta is positive delta is positive because uh, the function does not vanish on the boundary circle okay the only place where it van vanishes is at the center it is the only 0 it has okay. So you have this now now what you are going to do is do the following thing so you see uh, see take any take any w uh, in the in the uh, uh, the target complex plane with the property that the distance from w to w0 is less than delta okay so from w0 you draw a disc okay uh, uh, centered at w0 radius delta and look at any w inside this disc okay what you must understand is that if uh, you take a point if you start with a point uh, zeta here on the boundary circle okay then the modulus of uh, f the modulus of f of z uh, minus w0 at, at zeta which is mod f zeta minus w0 that is greater than or equal to delta that will tell you that f zeta is going to lie outside. because you see what is the assumption the assumption is you take if this zeta is uh, uh, on the boundary circle and for points on the boundary circle the uh, function value minus w0 mod is greater than or equal to delta so mod f zeta minus w0 is greater than or equal to delta the distance of f zeta the value 
of f of z at zeta mi minus w naught mod of that is greater than or equal to delta that means that f zeta goes outside this disc in particular what this tells you is that you know uh, f of z f zeta cannot be equal to any w in in this disc okay so let me write that down so for zeta with mod zeta minus z not is equal to rho the modulus of f of zeta minus w uh, uh, is greater than 0 uh, for any w with mod w minus w not lesser than delta okay this is a very uh, simple observation but why this is so important is because you can define the following thing define n of w to be 1 by 2 pi i integral over mod z minus z not equal to rho of uh, d log uh, f of uh, f of z minus uh, uh, w not uh, minus w I want you to understand this I mean this is in other words what is this I mean this, this is just 1 by 2 pi i integral over mod z minus z not equal to rho uh, f of uh, f dash of z by f of z minus w dz this is what it is that is the logarithmic derivative okay. First of all what I want you to know is that the what does the uh, argument principle uh, tell you the argument principle tells you that uh, whenever you take d log of an analytic function and integrate it over a curve okay and divide by 2 pi i what you will get is the number of zeros minus number of poles inside that curve okay. So if you go by that I uh, will get number of zeros minus number of poles of f of z minus w but there are no poles because f of z minus w is of course uh, it is it is it is analytic okay and f of z minus w is not 0 mind you f of z minus w for for z on the boundary circle that is for a value of z equal to zeta with mod zeta minus z not equal to rho f of z the value of f of z minus w will become f of zeta minus w and that is positive so this quantity is never going to vanish this quantity its modulus is never going to vanish on the boundary curve in particular it means that this quantity uh, I, I itself is not going to vanish on the boundary curve therefore this in this integral is well defined okay and the function f of z minus w has no poles what it has is only zeros so what this will uh, 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 what this will give you is if you this this uh, uh, um, yeah if I take f of z minus w naught uh, then what I will get is uh, the number of zeros of f of z minus w naught which is n w naught okay which is the number of times uh, the value w naught is taken okay it is a multiplicity of the 0 of f of z minus w naught okay and if I instead of that if I put w what I will get is the number of times the value w is taken see the number of times the value w is taken is the same as the number of zeros of f of z minus w okay the number of times a, uh, a value w is taken by f of z is the same as the number of zeros of f of z minus w okay so this is the number of so th you should think of this as number of times the value w is taken okay so you this is just uh, this is just a application of the argument principle the counting principle and it is purely uh, which purely is just the residue theorem nothing more than that okay. Now but the beauty of this thing is that you can count uh, you have a formula you have a nice formula for number of times uh, an analytic function takes a value okay okay so uh, now the, the the so the fact is the following so I will 
tell you what the fact is the fact is that n of w so i should tell you uh, 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 let me again remind you where this n of w is defined it's defined for all w with this property okay so this n of w is going to be defined on this disk okay n of w is going to be defined on this disk and what are the values it takes it takes integer values because n of w counts the number of times the value w is taken okay so what you are going to have is let me continue let me extend this diagram so you have a map like this this is n of w and this map goes again into uh, uh, the complex plane if you want but actually it goes into uh, uh, integers so I, I put the complex plane here but actually uh, values in the set of integers which is contained in complex numbers so it takes values only on the real axis okay and uh, uh, the values are only the integer values takes only integer values so it takes only discrete set of values okay now the fact is the following you have a function from defined on this open disk okay which takes values in the complex plane of course the values are integer values forget the fact that they are integer values for the moment think of this function as simply taking values in the complex plane the important fact is this function depends on this w as w varies over this disk the important fact is this n of w is an analytic function of w that is the crucial fact n of w is an analytic function of w for mod w minus w not strictly less than delta this is the fact okay now this so i am telling you the uh, the heart of the theorem is in this statement okay the heart of the proof is in this statement so let us accept this for the moment and see how you can get the theorem and then go on to prove this separately all right so you see suppose suppose uh, we accept the we accept the above fact then if i take the image of n that will be n of the whole disk if i take the image of n under this disk you see n of w is an analytic function of w in you know analytic function is of course continuous so you are taking the image under a continuous map of this disk okay but what is this disk this disk is uh, both uh, uh, connected okay uh, it, it of course uh, the point that i want is that it is connected and if you take the image of a connected set under a function it is again connected so this this is going to be is a connected subset subset of the complex plane okay it is a connected subset of the complex plane but mind you what are the values uh, it is taking the values it is taking are integer values okay so you are going to get a connected subset of integers but you know the integers are discrete points the only connected sets are the individual points okay the only connected subsets of the set of integers are the single uh, singleton sets if i take a subset having more than one point that will be disconnected because it can be broken down into a un union of single points and each single point is closed and is also open because it's the discrete topology okay so there is some topology here so so this implies that n of w is equal to a constant integer because the only connected subset of integers are singleton subsets since the only connected subsets of c are the singletons
of course uh, when I say only connected subsets I am not worrying about uh, the null set okay it can be the uh, null set is always a if you want uh, uh, topologically maybe uh, one can take null set as a connected set okay uh, um, but the point is I am not worried about the null set here the fact is that uh, the uh, n is taking n the n is going to take some value okay n is going to give me some value the value is an integer that is that is assured because of the uh, the argument principle so it is going to take a value the uh, so the image of this is not going to be empty it has to take a value and the fact is it can take only that value because n is um, analytic so the only thing I am using here is that n is continuous I am not using anything more than that I am not using the full power of the fact that n is analytic the only uh, weaker thing that I am using from here is that n is actually only continuous okay as a function of w that will give me n of w is a constant okay but what does this imply this implies n of w is the same as n of w not because n of w does not depend on what w is or I can put w equal to w not I can put w equal to w0 because w can vary anywhere inside this disc w is a variable point in this disc so I put w equal to the central point w0 but what is n of w0 n of w0 is the number of times the function takes the value w0 uh, I mean the number of times the function f of z takes the value w0 which is the same as the number of zeros of f of z minus w0 okay so what so what does this tell you this tells you that uh, for every value w in this disc n uh, the function f of z does take that value and it takes it as many times as it takes the value w0 that is what it says so this implies every value w with mod w minus w0 strictly less than delta is taken by f of z exactly as many times times as it takes the value w0 that is what it says which and of course the number of times it takes the value w0 uh, is going to be the multiplicity of the 0 of f at w0 yeah of f f minus w0 at uh, uh, at z0 okay so let me write that which is which is the multiplicity m0 of the 0 z0 of f of z minus w0 okay in particular what does this tell you this tells you that this whole disk is in the image all these values are taken by the function this whole disk is in the image so we'll go back to our argument I started with an analytic function defined on a domain okay I ass assumed it is non-constant I took a value z0 and uh, took the value of the function at z0 that is omega0 and what I ended up proving is that there is a whole disk surrounding w0 full of values of the function that means this whole disk is contained in the image of f okay so for w0 is of course in the image of f because it is a value of f what is the image of f it is the values of f the set of subset of values of f okay so w0 is certainly in the image of f and what this argument says is give me a w0 which is in the image of f I have a whole disk surrounding w0 which is also in the image of f but that is the condition which says that every point of the image of f is an interior point but that tells you that the image of f is open okay so so what this tells you so this implies thus this means uh, for every value w0 of f of z there exists uh, an open disk mod w minus w0 lesser than delta uh, contained in image of f okay 
and uh, and in fact you see uh, and these values uh, uh, what are the points at which you are looking at these values you are you are look the points at which I am looking at these values are the points in this disk okay. So, in fact what you are saying is the the, the 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 values you are counting are the values inside this disk okay so for every point z in uh, 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 i mean if you look at the function uh, restricted to this open disk there itself the function takes uh, those many values okay so in fact it is in the image of that disk uh, or even in uh, f of the set of all uh, set of all z such that mod z minus z not is less than uh, less than rho. In fact, the image is uh, inside this, which is of course a subset of image of f, which is f of d. So what this tells you. This tells you what this tells you is that uh, uh, f of d uh, or even uh, f of is open, open in the complex, plane. and that finishes the proof of the open mapping theorem. Okay, that finishes the proof. So the only thing that I have to check is this fact. So this fact is the fundamental thing that I'll have to check. I'll have to check this fact. Okay. Once you check this fact, you're done. Okay. So how does one do? So let's let's check that fact. Proof of the fact. So you know. So let's let me write this down. N w is defined to be 1 by 2 pi i integral over mod z minus z not equal to rho and mind you whenever I write integral over a curve you are always taking the anti clockwise positive orientation. So when whenever I uh, when I am integrating over this curve of course if you want I will put a circular I mean I put an arrow on this circle saying that you are going in the positive direction which is the anti clockwise direction the direction is decided in such a way that the area uh, uh, in which you are uh, counting the zeros is lies to the left as you walk on the curve in the direction specified. So if you walk on this curve uh, in this direction then to your left lies this the interior of the curve and to the right lies the exterior of the curve okay and it is in the interior of the curve that you are counting the number of zeros okay more generally the residue theorem you are counting the number of zeros minus number of pores okay and that is in the interior of the curve. So the interior is very very important the interior is specified by the orientation so whenever there is an integral please remember there is always an orientation okay and in this you usually assume only the anti clockwise orientation. So let me write that down uh, it is uh, f dash of z d dub d z uh, by f of z minus w alright. So you see what now let us let us try to you know scientifically I mean let us uh, uh, let us heuristically try to think of a proof of this you want to show n of w is a uh, 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 analytic function of w that means you have to show that n of w is a different is differentiable with respect to the variable w so long as w lies inside this disc the set of all uh, points centered at uh, I mean points whose distance from w0 is great uh, is strictly less than delta okay see suppose it is differentiable okay so think you heuristically suppose it is differentiable think of w and z as uh, 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 variables that do not depend on each other okay then how do how do I get the derivative here I just get the derivative here by applying d by dw okay and if I apply d by dw I will get n dash of w which is the first derivative of w and so that is the same as applying d by dw on this side but you see the integration is only with respect to the variable z the integration has got nothing to do with the variable w so if you can push the differentiation inside if you can switch the integration and differentiation 
then you can guess what you should expect as the derivative of the uh, of uh, n of w okay we would expect we would expect n dash of w is equal to d by d w of n of w to be equal to 1 by 2 pi i integral over mod z minus z not equal to rho differentiate this with respect to w if you differentiate this with, with respect to w what you will get is you will get f dash of z uh, 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 f dash of z is of course a constant it does not involve w the only term that involves w is this okay and the differentiation of that will be well uh, you will get f of z minus w the whole squared because the differentiation of 1 by t is minus 1 by t squared okay so I will get a minus here and then I have to differentiate this f uh, minus w with respect to w and I will get a minus 1 and I will get uh, dz this is what you should expect. So, so in other words you will get you should expect 1 by 2 pi i integral over mod z minus z not equal to rho uh, f dash of z dz by f of z minus w the whole square this is what you should expect okay. But what have I but what is it that uh, uh, you have used you use the fact that you can uh, interchange the integration and differentiation by w okay and this needs justification because it is a technical thing you cannot blindly interchange integration and differentiation okay and uh, uh, there are many ways to prove that this is correct okay there are many many ways to prove this that this is correct if you prove this then you are proving that uh, uh, w is differentiable okay all this is happening uh, uh, all this is happening with mod w minus w not strictly less than delta that is where your that is the disk on which your uh, w is varying okay. So, if this is if you if you can prove this then you have proved n of w is differentiable everywhere in that disk but that means it is analytic because analytic is differentiable not just at a point but differentiable everywhere or a in, in a disk surrounding the point okay this is what you would expect and this is correct okay. So, you should remember that uh, even the uh, the regular the usual Cauchy's uh, uh, integral formula is actually a statement that involves uh, this kind of idea see the usual Cauchy integral formula is also actually a statement of this type because you know if you think about it uh, so let me I mean I am I am I am telling this so that it will help you to you know uh, uh, you will it will help you to understand that uh, this is a standard thing that happens and you should recognize it when it happens. So, you know if you want uh, so I will say recall suppose you know uh, suppose you have a point <coughs> suppose you have a point z0 and suppose you have a simple closed curve gamma surrounding z0 then you know that f uh, n of uh, so you, you know that f of z0 is given by 1 by 2 pi i integral over gamma f of z dz by z minus z0 this is your usual Cauchy integral form this is for n equal to 1 then if you calculate f dash of z0 you will get 1 by 2 pi i integral over gamma f of z dz by z minus z0 the whole square and more generally you will get fn of z0 is equal to n factorial by 2 pi i integral over gamma f of z dz by z minus z0 to the power of probably I will get n plus 1 this is more generally what this is the this is your Cauchy integral formula. But what is how do you get this formula actually see if you start with this formula then you can get all the other formulas simply by noting that f dash of z0 is differentiate this with respect to z0 think of z0 as a variable if you differentiate this with respect to z0 then you and you so you have to differentiate this term with respect to z0 okay but then assume that you can interchange integration and differentiation then you will be differentiating this but if you differentiate this you will get this and inductively if you do it you will get all these formulas. So 
the whole philosophy of uh, your Cauchy integral formula itself is the fact that you can actually differentiate under the integral sign okay and it is the same kind of idea that I want to use here I mean that is the same kind of idea that, that giving me this okay. So in so uh, in fact what I want to say is that if you know the proof of the Cauchy integral formula then you know the proof of that there is nothing different there is really nothing different but nevertheless let me do it okay just to tell you how these techniques are uh, proved I mean uh, how I mean how these techniques work J or it so you know uh, it also gives you proof of Cauchy integral formula if you want so so uh, so you know I want to show the derivative of this is this okay so what does it mean how do I prove that okay let us go back to let us go back to that. You see now what is n dash of w by definition you want to show this is limit delta w tends to 0 n of w plus delta w minus n of w by delta w this is the derivative this is the usual definition of derivative okay and of course all this is happening uh, w plus delta w and is also in this in this disc okay this is how we do the derivative okay. so definition for of derivative and you want to show that this is equal to this guy 1 by 2 pi i integral over mod z minus z not equal to rho f dash z t z by f of z minus w the whole square this is what you want to show so what is this quantity okay if you write it down it is 1 by 2 pi i uh, into delta omega integral of m integral over mod z minus z not equal to rho and n of w plus uh, delta w is uh, f dash of z dz divided by f of z minus w plus delta w minus you will get uh, y again 1 by 2 pi i delta w um, integral over mod z minus z not equal to rho uh, f dash of z d z divided by f of z minus minus w okay this is what it is which if I uh, if I combine uh, 1 by 2 pi i delta w outside I will get integral over mod z minus z not equal to rho uh, 1 by f z minus w minus delta w minus 1 by f z minus w uh, into f dash of z d z this is what you get and then if you cross multiply take LCM then what you will get is essentially uh, 1 by 2 pi i delta w integral over mod z minus z not is equal to rho uh, in the numerator I am going to get a delta w into f dash of z t z uh, divided by f z minus w minus delta w into f z minus w okay and since delta w has got nothing to do with the variable of integration z you can bring it outside and cancel this with that so effectively what you will get is simply 1 by 2 pi i integral over mod z minus z not is equal to rho uh, f dash of z t z by uh, f of z minus w minus delta w into f z minus w so this is what uh, this is what this the quantity in the box reduces to this okay so what do you have to show let me rewrite it so to show uh, n dash of 
w is equal to limit delta w tends to 0 of this quantity 1 by 2 pi i uh, integral over mod z minus z naught is equal to rho uh, f dash of z dz divided by f z minus w minus delta w into f z minus w that is equal to 1 by 2 pi i integral over mod z minus z not equal to rho uh, f dash of z dz by f z minus w the whole square this is what you have to show okay. Now uh, it is a statement that looks quite obvious because you know if for a moment if you can if you assume that you can push this limit inside the integral okay then and if you take delta w if you let delta w tend to 0 you will obviously get this okay. So essentially this uh, this uh, what you have to show is believably correct uh, because if you if you can agree to switch the integral and the limit okay but technically you cannot do that all the time right that also has to be proved okay and uh, and how does one prove that you want to show limit of a certain quantity is some other quantity then it is enough to show that the limit of this difference is 0 okay so we go by that so uh, in other words we want to show limit as delta w goes to 0 of this quantity 1 by 2 pi i you combine both the integrals the integral over mod z minus z not equal to rho if I combine both I will get 1 by f z so let me write it like this f dash of z t z uh, this into f z minus w minus uh, 1 by 2 pi i integral or mod z minus z not equal to rho uh, f dash of z by f of z minus w the whole square dz uh, is equal to 0 this is what you want to show and mind you uh, 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 limit of this whole quantity is equal to 0. So I pushed I have pushed this quantity in inside the limit I brought the quant this quantity was on the right side I brought it to the left side and I pushed it into the limit and I pushed it into the limit because this has no delta w term okay so th this term is independent of delta w so applying limit delta w to this does not give anything else except itself okay you get back this term and you know so I have to show as delta w tends to 0 uh, I have to show that this quantity uh, is 0 goes to 0 and to show that a complex number uh, goes to 0 it is enough to show that it is modulus goes to 0 so uh, which is uh, so this is equivalent to to limit delta w tends to 0 of modulus of this quantity uh, uh, goes to 0 uh, but even but let me do one more simplification let me take this 1 by 2 pi i integral common all right and if I go uh, if I uh, combine both the integrands okay what I will end up with is I uh, will get uh, uh, 1 by 2 pi i integral over mod z minus z not equal to rho uh, I will get um, I if I take the LCM it will be f of z minus w minus delta w into f z minus w the whole squared this is what you will get and uh, here on the numerator I will get an f z minus w and for that term I will get uh, an f z minus w minus delta w if I subtract I will simply get a delta w and what is what was there on top is uh, already a common f dash of z t z okay and you want to show that this is equal to 0 you want to show this is equal to 0 again uh, I th uh, 
I mean the limit of this quantity as delta w tends to 0 is 0 is what you want to show okay and uh, uh, but to show that this quantity is 0 it is enough to show that the modulus of this quantity uh, uh, the limit of the modulus of that quantity is 0 okay. So uh, now is where uh, so you know you, you have to estimate this integral you have to estimate this integral in magnitude okay that is you have to estimate the modulus of the integral as delta becomes very small and show that uh, the estimate also goes to 0 okay or it is bounded by something that goes to 0 as delta w tends to 0. So you see finally it boils down to estimating an integral and this is a standard trick uh, or technique that you would have seen uh, even in a first course in complex analysis we use the so called ML formula. So what is the uh, you recall the ML formula the so called ML formula which is uh, uh, in other words in it is also called as I mean you also remember it as modulus of the integral is lesser than the integral of the modulus okay what is that formula see if you have if you have a simple closed curve g uh, I mean gamma and you have a function uh, f of z uh, or let me even write it as g of z uh, which is defined an analytic on the region enclosed by the simple closed curve and the boundary okay uh, perhaps I do not even need uh, uh, I do not even need g to be you know analytic and all that it is enough if g is just continuous on the boundary it, it need not even be defined uh, inside okay it need not be a, I do not have g to be analytic I do not need to worry about the about the uh, interior of the curve okay. So g g uh, continuous on uh, the curve gamma okay uh, gamma is of course uh, piece wise smooth contour which means that uh, gamma is a continuous curve and when you parameterize gamma in as a function of the parameter its first derivative is piecewise continuous okay then uh, what the ML formula actually tells you is that if, if you integrate if you calculate integral over gamma with this orientation with some orientation okay since I am not worried about whether uh, uh, about the interior or the exterior of the curve okay I am really not worried about the orientation it can be either this way the or the other way alright and for that matter I should also tell you that uh, the curve gamma also need not be a closed curve can just be any path starting from some point ending at some point it need not even be an it could be just any path okay it need not even be a closed curve so then the if you calculate the integral over gamma of g z d z okay this makes sense okay this integral over gamma if you calculate the modulus this is always less than or equal to modulus of the integral is less than or equal to integral of the over the modulus and this is less than or equal to ml where uh, mod g z is less than or equal to m on gamma okay and uh, and uh, integral over gamma mod d z is actually l which is length of gamma okay. So this is something that you should have seen in a first course in complex analysis see the fact is g is continuous okay therefore mod g is continuous <laughs> and mod g is continuous it is a continuous function on this path okay but the path is both compact and connected therefore mod g is bounded a continuous function on a real valued function on a compact connected set is you know uniformly continuous and its image is an interval uh, if it is real valued okay. So that interval will have a maximum value and that maximum value is m. So that mod so mod g will be just the continuity of g will tell you that mod g is bounded by m. So uh, I can instead of this mod g's I can put m and that m can come out of the integral 
then what I will be left out with will be integral over gamma mod dz and integral over gamma mod dz is actually the length of the arc gamma that is the meaning of integral of mod dz okay because mod dz is an element of length along the arc okay so this is actually the formula for arc length if you recall from a first course in complex analysis. So this is a this this is a very standard formula and this comes from the corresponding formula that you have for real valued functions of one variable that the modulus of the integral is less than the integral of the modulus okay you can you can deduce this from that okay and this is often used and this is what we are going to use in this case also so let us use that here if you use that here so you know I have to estimate this integral okay now you see look at look at my let let us look at the situation that I am in um uh the the point is uh so so how is this so let me draw, let me draw the diagrams again uh, so that is this so that is this point uh, is it not uh, that is this point uh, mm, originally i started with uh, uh, is it not and there was an z uh, in the in a in a in an open disk um, centered at z0 radius uh, was if I remember uh, it was rho okay z was somewhere here and then the function uh, f took the value z0 to the value w0 and I was again considering a disc uh, centered at w0 uh, and radius uh, delta okay and w was the value here inside this disk okay and if you remember the delta was chosen in such a way that if you take z on this boundary circle which is given by mod z minus z0 equal to rho then f of z will go outside because f mod fz the delta was chosen in such a way that mod fz minus w0 is always greater than equal to delta for z with mod z minus z0 equal to rho this was this is how we started out if you remember okay Be this was just uh, from the fact that uh, z0 is a 0 of fz minus w0 fz minus w0 is an is a non constant analytic function so z0 is an isolated 0 so there is a disk surrounding z0 where there are no other zeros of fz minus w0 and in particular on the boundary if you restrict fz minus w0 it has a minimum value it is again a continuous function real valued function on a compact connected set so its image will be a closed interval in the real line and then you are looking at uh, uh, its minimum value okay and it is this delta that is used here alright and it is only because of this delta that I am using here that n of w is properly defined alright. Now see my w is here and my delta w is also somewhere in an in a so when I calculate the derivative at w I am actually taking a smaller neighbourhood so the, the uh, there is a uh, w plus delta w actually lies in this neighbourhood it is a smaller neighbourhood of w that lies inside this delta neighbourhood of w0 okay and uh, what I wanted to know is that see uh, if you look at uh, uh, if you look at mod of so you know I am just trying to estimate these quantities okay it is if you look at uh, if you look at the function mod of f of z minus w okay now what I wanted to understand is when I calculate the derivative n dash of w w is fixed when I calculate n dash of w my w is fixed and it is only delta w that is varying okay delta w is a small change in w so w now is fixed mind you okay and it is delta w that is changing if I fix w then I know mod fz minus w this quantity on uh, uh, mod z minus z0 equal to rho is also greater than or equal to a certain delta w delta sub w which for w equal to w0 gives me delta sub w0 is my delta okay because you see fz minus w uh, fz minus w does not vanish 
for z on the boundary okay f z minus w will not vanish for z on the boundary why is that uh, why is that so because for z on the boundary f z minus w naught is greater than or equal to delta okay so the distance of f z from w naught is uh, is outside this disc okay so f so if i if i if i, if I fix a if I fix a zeta here then f of zeta will be outside it will be a value outside this disc because the distance f of zeta from w naught has to be greater than delta okay and my w is inside so that f of zeta can never be equal to w in other words f z minus w will be greater than or equal to a certain minimum value for uh, e z with mod z minus z not equal to rho this is again by the same reasoning namely that f z minus w mod f z minus w is a continuous function real valued function and it is not vanishing it is a, uh, it's a non zero function and it is when you restrict it to this circle which is both compact and connected it has to be uniformly continuous it has to the image has to be a closed interval and this delta w is the least is the left hand point of that closed interval it is the least value and it is positive mind you delta is positive delta w delta w is positive and if you put w equal to w naught then delta w is the original delta you started with delta delta w naught is actually delta that is how we got delta okay. So I am saying you are getting delta w just in the same way as you got delta but only thing is delta was gotten for w naught same argument you apply to some w you will get a delta sub w and of course this delta sub w depends on w but mind you when I am calculating the derivative with respect to w w is fixed what is varying is only delta this capital delta w okay. So uh, yeah so uh, this I say delta but sometimes I mean the small delta and sometimes I mean the capital delta which is the change in w so uh, please make an effort to distinguish between the two. So you see you know the reason why I want this inequality because you know so that I can write the reciprocal of this is less than or equal to uh, 1 by delta w so it helps to take care of this term okay and what about this guy you see more see f of f of z minus w minus delta w this will tend to f of z minus w as uh, delta w tends to 0 this is just continuity all right therefore what it what this will tell you is that modulus of this will tend to modulus of this as delta w tends to 0 okay and but you see this guy is greater than or equal to delta sub small delta sub w. So what this will tell you is that I can choose delta w sufficiently if I choose delta w sufficiently small I should be able to make this say greater than or equal to say delta by 2 okay. So there exists uh, uh, epsilon 1 such that uh, mod uh, if you make mod delta w less than epsilon 1 uh, then you can make mod of uh, uh, fz minus w minus delta w greater than or equal to delta by delta w by 2 see after all there is a quantity which is going to a quantity which is greater than or equal to delta w then at some point it has to be greater than half that value see it's in the limit this quantity is going to be greater than or equal to this okay as delta w tends to 0 that means at some point it has to be it has to exceed half delta w okay so beyond a certain point it has to it see values are coming close to delta w so at some point it has to exceed half of delta w. I have chosen half of delta w but you could have chosen delta w by anything I mean by by in you could have taken delta w into some constant okay into some fraction right I have chosen 2 just for fun okay. So this is true so so what what this will tell you also uh, mod f dash of z uh, is is, uh, uh, is is greater than or equal to some uh, m m dash uh, on mod z minus z not equal to rho which is uh, you know which is pretty straightforward because you know f is analytic then you know uh, its derivatives are also analytic uh, in particular f dash is continuous okay and a continuous function if you take the modulus 
uh, 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 no, I should not put greater than or equal. I should put less than or equal to. Okay, greater than or equal to is also correct. So again, same the uh, same uh, uh, argument. You take f dash of z. That's a continuous function, and that continuous function, uh, if you restrict it to this compact connected set, is uniformly continuous. The image of that being a real valued function is a closed interval on the real line in the positive uh, positive x axis and if you take the maximum the right end point of the interval you call that as m prime then you see that this is the bound okay so if you put all these together you will get modulus of 1 by 2 pi i integral over mod z minus z not equal to rho of that quantity delta w f dash of z dz divided by uh, f of z minus w minus delta w into fz minus w the whole squared this by the ml formula you will get 1 by 2 pi which is the modulus of this and I will I will get a mod delta w on top mod f of mod f dash of z is less than or equal to m m prime and then I will get a mod d's uh, then uh, for this quantity I am going to get a delta w by 2 and for this quantity I am going to get a delta w squared and for what is left that is 1 by uh, I mean integral over mod z minus z not equal to rho of mod dz I will get the length of the uh, the arc which is in this case a circle circle of radius uh, delta uh, sorry it is a circle of day radius rho so I am going to get 2 pi rho so I will get this into 2 pi rho and if you if you calculate it I will see this, this is just going to be uh, constant independent of of uh, delta w which is that constant is, is m 2 m prime by delta w cube okay that has got nothing to do with the diff the change in w times mod delta w okay and this of course you know uh, 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 this is true for uh, mod delta w lesser than this uh, epsilon 1 okay so if you take mod delta w less than epsilon 1 and if you if you further let that delta w tend to 0 then this will go to 0 which means uh, this uh, integral will go to 0 as delta, delta w tends to 0 and that is what you wanted to prove and that ends the proof okay. So this tends to 0 as delta w tends to 0 that is the end of the proof of the theorem okay. So that proves uh, the open mapping theorem okay. The next uh, thing that we need to understand is uh, how the proof of the open mapping theorem actually gives the inverse function theorem okay and probably we will look at it in the next lecture right.